Hey folks, Guns Gear on Target Training out here in Oregon. If you enjoy this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Today I wanted to reflect on the savagery we have seen from Hamas in regards to Israel, specifically the absolute butchering and savagery of women, children, old people who were simply innocents living in their space, in their house, at events, whatever that was in their kibbutz, and they were attacked. What it made me think about was a couple of things that are in the ether right now. One, the anti-gun crew has repeatedly said, you don't need firearms that they define as assault weapons because the police will always be there to protect you. And if you have these tools, these weapons, then therefore you must be a bad person with evil or ill intent. Well, since there are 20, maybe 25 million AR-15s in the United States, maybe even more than that, and we don't have people generally running and shooting people, um, you know, those 25 million people are not out slaughtering people, that argument is a very weak one. I also wanted to talk mostly about what it made me think about in regards to personal protection, home defense, or maybe the defense of your community. The likelihood of a terrorist attack of that scale in the United States, given the size of the country, let's face it, is relatively small. Nevertheless, the people in kibbutz who survived or fought back and had the tools to do that did keep the terrorists away in many cases. And it really made me think about what, as someone who is responsible for my own personal protection and that of my family, what I would want to have and why there are limitations for the typical things that people use and they think, well, I'll be fine. Well, I would agree if you're one, if you have one attacker who's breaching your door and you are staying in a safe place and you dial 911 and that person then comes through your door, you told them to stop, to get out, you've verbally communicated if they continue, right, and they're a threat to your lives, you are willing to use force to stop them. So many people, right, would start with something like a revolver and they'd start with a revolver because they'd say, well, 357 Magnum, proven load, you know, one shot stops, all those kinds of things. And you'd never need more than six, or in the case of a semi-automatic in controlled states who don't believe in your Second Amendment right, they say you only need 10 rounds. 10 rounds is, is all you need because the typical gunfight between two people is ended in, you know, three rounds four rounds. So you would never need more. You shouldn't even think about that. And you have more. You are a bad person and you need to think of society and therefore we need to, to limit your Second Amendment right to protect and defend yourself. What we saw though a week ago on Saturday was slaughter. Do I think that's going to happen in this country? No. Do I think it's possible? Maybe. I pray to God it never happens. So I wouldn't necessarily choose, in fact, I would not choose this as my primary self-defense tool, especially in that kind of situation where you hear massive amounts of gunfire, you hear bombs, they're moving toward you, and you're saying, well, it'll be fine, the police will take care of this. The next probably most common tool that people have uh, for personal protection, right, is a handgun. You know, whatever stock sort of service pistol it is, this is an M&P Gen 1, 9 millimeter, standard capacity magazine, so 17 plus 1 in total capacity. Well, that would be fine, probably, if I were trained and getting good hits on an individual threat or maybe two threats that also had pistols. However, a pistol or a revolver is an incredibly difficult tool 
to use effectively under stress. You have two points of contact, you have a short sight radius, right? You're, you're basically controlling everything here. So yeah, close, close quarters, right? This might be an okay tool as a backup, but in terms of holding off a group of armed terrorists or people who have ill intent to you or your community, I got 17 rounds, maybe I got one other mag with me. I'm going to have to like really be judicious about how far I can um, make a shot count. And, you know, there may be experts out there. And I, I know there are. I know that a lot of guys can just crush at 50 yards or 100 yards and just consistently hit a small target in the upper chest or face. I'm sure there are guys. I'm not that guy. I am not that guy with a pistol. So for me, yeah, it's something I can carry every day even a full size, I can carry this effectively. I can conceal it. It's not going to give me standoff dis distance or reach to stop a group of armed people from doing me harm because they're going, I'm going to be outgunned. I'm basically going to be outgunned. So again, these are my least two favorites for those reasons. The next option, and this is, um, Obviously, on the higher end, this is a Beretta 1301T. So we have seven in the tube, one in the chamber, optic on top, right? Flashlight would be ideal. This gun doesn't have one. But so this would give me an eight round capacity. Awesome, right? Again, one or two attackers. And let's say I have a full capacity and I use these Velcro mounted saddles on the sides of my shotgun. So that gives me another seven rounds. Okay, that's not bad. That's 15 total capacity and much more devastating effect using buckshot or slugs, right? At distance, slugs, shotgun with slugs, you know, definitely a 50 yard, definitely potentially out to a hundred yards if you know what you're doing in your train. The downside is recoil. <laughs> And it's, it's a hungry platform. Like, it, it, you cannot keep it fed enough. Because as you're expending rounds, like, even if you have your stuff together and you're doing reloads and you're just, you know, shoving another four or six rounds in, whatever that is, you're still not going to typically, you know, be defending with just, you know, loads and loads of these, you know, shell carriers, shell caddies with you in that fight. The next option that is worth considering in this type of situation is a pistol caliber carbine, PCC. This one is a Foxtrot mic. There are lots of manufacturers out there. They aren't necessarily that expensive. A lot of people had with a brace, as a braced pistol. The ATF has now made that Difficult, to say the least, because potentially if you have a brace pistol, you are breaking ATF's rules. Um, they're creating laws basically by administrative fiat, not by actually going through Congress. But the advantage of this is if you're running a Glock, for example, and I often use Glocks, if I have a Glock 17, the magazine compat compatibility is going to work great. I've also got, you know, something like a 33 round magazine. If that was, you know, th this gun was set up with a 33 round magazine, while it's a good 50 yard, again, gun, which would be better um, at distance than a handgun, it's still shooting a pistol caliber nine millimeter. So, or 40 or 45, whatever you have set up. The advantage of a pistol caliber carbine is there's virtually no felt recoil. It's very easy to get on point and, you know, hit targets. When I train, you know, new shooters, particularly those who want to shoot an AR style platform, I start them first with a 22 and then with a pistol caliber carbine like this Foxtrot Mike 16 inch version. And what they find is, you know, they can consistently get hits without a lot of training out to distance. So the other advantage of this type of 
platform is the fact that you can shoot more for less money from a training standpoint. And if you're teaching other people, and maybe there are people in your family who are part of that personal protection team, this is a solid option. This is a very solid option. But again, when we're talking about a huge group of people coming at you, there are a couple of other what I would call carbine style platforms that I think would be a better choice. So another so-called evil tool. Um, this I bought, I don't know, 15 years ago. It's an SAR-1 canted gas black, like all the, the cheap stuff that was coming over. And I think it cost me, you know, $350 or something. Now, granted, this was 20 years ago, and now the prices of any kind of AK platform, uh, AKM platform, have gone up significantly, and the ammo is nowhere near as readily available. However, if you have this ammo and standard capacity magazines, 30 round magazines, this, even with its iron sights, um, I mean, I can, <laughs> I can get really good hits. Uh, out to 100 yards for me with my aging eyes without problem whatsoever. It's small, it's comfortable, it's not particularly heavy. So this would be a solid, solid option. Now, both this and the AR-15 platform that we'll talk about next, one of the things I need to be aware of when I'm shooting, or if I'm shooting multiple threats at distance, is this round will continue. It has a high velocity round, it continues a long time, and it can go right through barriers and other things. So keep in mind that this type of platform, I really have to know what my target is and what's beyond that, particularly in an urban environment. So something to think about. But this, again, cheap, nothing fancy, all stock, freaking boring, right? Um, but it works. It totally works, and it could work well from a massive, you know, again, these tools are assuming the very worst, massive amounts of people, terrorists, whatever they are, coming toward you, and you can tell your life is in danger, right? They have weapon capability intent. They're shooting other people. At that point, I know first, can I unass the area? Can I run away? That would be ideal. What we saw in Israel, though, is those people couldn't run away. They were in their kibbutz, and they were in a place that they had a false illusion of safety. And this, for my friends on the far left, who don't believe, they think weapons are bad, guns are bad, it'll never happen here. We just saw something that thousands and thousands of Israelis thought would never happen there a massive terrorist attack. So they did what they did. They hid. But the savages who wanted them didn't care. And they were prepared to burn people down in their house. I'm telling you, that's not for me. If I can run away, I'm absolutely running away. If I can hide, I'm going to try to hide. But I'm telling you, if I have no choice and I have to fight, one thing about aggressors who bring, uh, you know, bring their attitude, whatever that attitude is, and they want to take advantage of you, they don't care. But they do care when someone is shooting back at them. And finally, for several reasons, uh, AR-15 platform is really exceptional at this. Now, you can get into a budget AR-15, right, with just iron sights for 500 bucks right? I mean, it's not your high-end BCM or Knight's Armament or Daniel Defense. But again, for 500 bucks, it would do it. What's interesting about the AR platform is it's easy, way easier to shoot this. And most people learn to shoot this with very little training, with some level of proficiency, much faster than a handgun. It is so much easier to shoot. Low recoil, very low recoil easy to control and manage. And even, you know, yes, got a Neotag, got a three-time magnifier on this one. But even with iron sights, you know, people can hit 50-yard targets without much effort whatsoever. I mean, you can take 
a brand new shooter and they can, you know, under proper supervision, right? Proper training. But I, I've been able to teach people in, you know, our level one defensive uh, carbine class. And these people who came in, yeah, they bought an arrow. They, ne they had no training. I mean, we took them from zero to like 75 in terms of their ability and speed in, in literally six hours. Because low recoil, easy to control, good magazine capacity, right? 30 rounds. You know, often you'll start a fight or you're invited to a fight you didn't want to be invited to and you have no way to run, hide. You have to fight. You're going you're gonna to have the ammunition that's in the gun or on the gun. Now, if I was living in a kibbutz area, right, then I would, if I heard bad guys approaching, right, I have a quick throw over your, throw over your, you know, neck pouch that ho holds, you know, four mags or maybe it's five. I don't, I don't remember. And it doesn't look cool. It's not tactical. It's not all that stuff. It flops around. But is that better than nothing? Heck yeah. So I'd grab that. At the very least, if I had time, I'd grab, you know, a magazine, like charge the gun magazine in it and grab a few other magazines and stuff them in my pockets if I could. So at the end of the day, folks, you really need to think about what would you do, having exhausted the run and hide part, if you were being attacked by multiple people coming into your community and really just ready to do savagery, uh, kill people, rape people, torture people, eviscerate children. I, 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 it's just horrible. What would you do? I don't think a handgun's going to get you there. I don't think a shotgun's really going to get you there. So a long gun, whatever that is, I don't care. It could be a bolt action hunting gun if you have enough ammo there. Like that's way, way, way better than nothing. I saw on CNN, and I'm sure you've heard stories as well, about various Israelis who did fight and fought back. One was, and I think he was a 74-year-old former paratrooper. And in his kibbutz, he organized people to be prepared to fight. And he was considered by many to be, oh, he's the old kooky guy, super paranoid. And a lot of, you know, younger people, like we see in our communities today, they're like, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You know, the, the police will get there. You really don't need anything. You must be a violent person if you want to plan that you might need to defend yourself. Then there's something wrong with you. You're obviously some sort of right-wing whack job. Well, I'm not a right-wing whack job. I do want to defend myself. And this particularly Israeli gentleman ended up losing his leg essentially right above the knee. He had shrapnel throughout him, uh, injured, you know, pretty badly. But as soon as he heard the fight, like all he had was a pistol and an extra magazine. He ran to, you know, basically the barrier. And there were 34 other people who he had trained who also came with them. And they held those attacking terrorists off for seven hours. So some of those people obviously had long guns, but he was completely out of his ammunition. And he had, what did he have next? He had a knife. I mean, he was prepared to fight terrorists, to fight murderers. My goal, my hope, my prayer is always that we never have to use violence to defend ourselves. That's my hope. That's my prayer. But folks, if you're not prepared, then you have no chance to do it. So think about this. If you do purchase a firearm, get training. Think about having a long gun. Frankly, it could be a lever action, pistol caliber carbine. It could be a lever action. It could be a bolt action, right? But some long gun that gives you the ability to stand off in distance from bad guys. All right, this has been a long video. I hope it provides some value. Thanks so much for watching. Finally, and as always, stay safe.